boys and girls, welcome to the Motivation Station. It's me, Ms. Trabal, with another lesson for all of my second grade math friends. We are continuing our learning on being able to work with equal groups of objects. If you were able to, at the end of the last video, I shared that you could go online and find a template for square tiles and have those printed out and cut out. So if you did that, great. You may be able to use those today, but if you didn't, it's okay. If you have maybe some Cheez-Its or crackers, food is always fun to work with and Cheez-Its are square shaped. If not, you could use dry beans. Those are easily easy to work with in groups or maybe some square Legos. So you have some options if you weren't able to print out those squares, that's okay. I'm using squares because our goal is to partition into squares and make those equal groups with the squares. But if you don't, as we know, you're home. So it's okay, we're gonna work with what we have. Remember some words to know are rows, which go left and right or horizontally, columns, which go up and down or vertically, and equal groups. And equal groups is a word that's in our standard or in our learning goal. And it just means that each group has the same amount in it or same amount of objects. So as a review, I have my pizza, uh, not my pizza, wow, my cake, my birthday cake. And it is rectangular shape. And I wanna know how many squares can fit in this rectangular birthday cake. So I'm going to use this cake here or put it down and I'm gonna use my square tiles. And as I'm partitioning, I'm just gonna to start to fill up the cake with squares. Hopefully you have a rectangular shape. You can lay out your squares. If not, just take your squares and start laying them out. So far I have four going down. So you could lay out four. I'm going to add more. I wanna fill up this cake. As I'm filling up the cake with tiles or squares, remember I wanna to try to get them as close as possible, not have too many gaps. I know I have small gaps because I did not cut as evenly as I would like, but it's okay as long as we are getting the idea of putting the squares as close as possible and not overlapping them. We want to get as accurate of an answer as we can. Notice here, I have one, two, three, four rows. So I already know there will be four rows here, but I don't know how much or how many squares will be in each row. Okay. So we're gonna think of our four rows as our groups. We have four equal groups here. And within those four equal groups or four rows, how many squares do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six squares in each row or six squares in each group. At the end of the video, I showed you how to write an addition sentence for the array or for the equal groups that we saw here. So if I have four rows and there are six in each row, I'm going to do six plus six plus six plus six. So I'm adding six four times because there are four rows of six. And I know six plus six is 12 and six plus six here is 12. And I can add 12 plus 12. I have two tens, which would make 20 and four ones. So I now have 24. If I was not sure how to add these, I can simply count my tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I have 24 squares in my cake. I'm able to share it with 24 people or everybody gets 
one square or 20, 24 squares there. So again, four rows and our rows go horizontally and six columns in this cake and our columns go up and down. So that's how I organized or how I counted out the rectangle that was already there. I partitioned it and I was able to count out how many squares. Suppose I don't have a rectangular shape, but I want to know how many equal groups are in a certain number of objects. So again, I'm going to move my space down so you can see. I will just put Okay, I'm going to use 10. 10 squares. Okay, I have 10 squares here and I want to organize it into equal groups so that I can count it. I'm going to start by building my rows. Notice as I built my rows, I decided to put two rows. And now I'm organizing. When I put one in the first row, then I put a match in the second row. Here's a, oops, another one in this row. And now I have another here. So I have two rows, one. And in each row, there are one, two, three, four, five. Think about our skip counting. Because I have five in each row, I can count by fives. Five, 10. So there are 10 squares in this rectangle. And we said we were using 10. So I have two rows and five columns. And I could do five plus five, because there's five in this group and five in this group, which makes 10. Could I also do two plus two plus two plus two? plus two, so I have two plus two makes four, plus two more makes six, two more equals eight, and two more is 10. I have two rows and five columns, and I have created, I have 10 squares. All right, boys and girls, so make sure that you are practicing your rows and columns, organizing your squares, which is super important. Next, we will be transitioning into understanding even and odd. And even and odd numbers, if you look at your canvas, you'll see a video that kind of goes over how to determine even and odd numbers. But basically, even numbers are able to be paired into equal groups. Going back to our 10 here, I have two groups here, so 10, is an even number because I was able to evenly distribute all 10 of these into equal groups. If I take one away, I now have nine. I have nine square tiles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because I have nine square tiles, this one has a mate, this one has a mate or a pair, this has a pair, a pair, but I don't have a mate or I don't have a pair for this one. So because I do not have a pair to complete this group, nine would be an odd number because I need to be able to have my equal groups, two equal groups in order to be an even number. So if I put my one square tile back, but I added one, now I have, remember we had 10, I added one more makes 11. Because I do not have another match here for my second group, I have an odd number. 
However, if I added one more, again, that completes my equal groups. So now I have an even number. So continue practicing even and odd numbers. If you have a pile of items or objects and you need to know if it's even or odd, start to pair them up by twos. And if you have an item left over that does not have a pair, then that would make an odd number. But if you are able to have a pair or a match or two groups of two for each item, then you have even. All right, boys and girls, that's all we have for today. I hope that lesson was helpful and be sure to practice your work in Canvas, watch the videos that are posted there and talk to your teachers and share a little bit about what you learned today. Bye for now, I'll see you soon.